Now, how do you generate QPSK? You need four phases now. This will generate two phases. How do you make two phases into four phases? What do you need to do? I will need two modulators. I will need two BPSK modulators, right. So, that brings us to a QPSK modulator or what is called as an IQ modulator. Let us trace this patiently. An IQ modulator has you have this light, this is where the modulator chip begins. So, the outer dotted line is one chip, one electro optic material. What you do is first you split your light and again you split and this part, this part you use as a phase modulator. This is like our intensity modulator that we had looked at. You know this is a Maxenter interferometer. This part you apply, use it as a phase modulator, meaning you will generate 0 phase and pi phase. How do you bias it? Bias it at the null and operate at 2 V pi. So, you got your output in the constellation, you got your 0 phase and pi phase. If your input was, uh, go back to this picture, if your input was high, you got minus phase, your input was low, you got plus phase, uh, 0 phase. You got pi phase, you got 0 phase. So, same way you got your 0 and pi in the first modulator. What about the second modulator? So, this has another branch. So, you have a second phase modulator here or rather a second intensity modulator which you will use again as a phase modulator. So, what would be the output of this? This will again be a, let me mark it in red. This is different data 0 and pi. But what do you want? You want 4 points in your constellation. So, how do you make 4 points now? These 2 points are now identical. So, I cannot just combine them. If I combine them, these 2 will fall on top of each other. So, to make it distinguishable, what I do is I put it through a phase modulator, what we saw in the first picture and apply a voltage such that it produces a phase shift of pi by 2. So, which means this constellation now if you shift, if shift the entire constellation by pi by 2 what happens? The whole constellation will now rotate by pi by 2. So, this becomes pi by 2 like this and then you combine. So, you are combining this with this and so you get 2 points, sorry, the, these 2 points here and the coming from the bottom arm, you have the 2 points. So, this is how you achieve QPSK modulation. So, each mean, so you call this as I arm in phase component, call this as quadrature component and how are you making it as a quadrature component? Making it as a quadrature component by adding this pi by 2. How many voltages do you need to apply now into this modulator? You will have V1 and V2, V1 which is your data, V2 which is again your V i and V q, call it as V i and V uh, q in phase data and quadrature data and then you need to apply another DC voltage which will rotate the phase by pi by 2. Hmm? So, to look at this once again, you have a data stream 1, you will have a data stream 2, you send C w through your I q modulator. So, you have 2 child modulators, uh, 2 child intensity modulator and you have a phase modulator. As I had shown earlier, first one will produce. So, what are the biasing conditions here? You should bias at null and the swing should be 2 V pi of this modulator. Similarly, this guy also should get biased at the null and this should be 2 V pi of this modulator. 
and if you make everything identical both the v pi's are going to be the same. And then you apply a phase shift of pi by 2 and so you get your QPSK modulation. As far as the intensity is concerned it is all going to remain high because you know the output of each phase modulator you are swinging between this and this. So, the power remains high whether you were it at 0 or a pi. So, the output of the so, but then at 0 crossings you will start seeing these crossings through nulls. So, power remains constant, but if you look at the phase you can have these phase jumps at every symbol duration. Uh, how do you write the output? Even though the equation looks little complicated it is not. Uh, e out is E in cos pi V by this is in phase by V pi cos pi V q by V pi. I do not have a 2 here why? In uh, earlier in field in the field equation I had a 2 V pi here, but here I do not have because it is a push pull configuration ok because it is operated in push pull configuration. So, you have the first arm, you have the second arm, the second arm is phase shifted by j pi by 2. So, e power j pi by 2 I am just writing it as plus j. So, your output is input times this is the phase shift introduced by the first term or result of that and this is the second term. So, if I were look at it in the magnitude it will be square root of. So, this is a of the form a plus j b. So, the magnitude is square root of a square plus b square and its phase is tan inverse b by a ok exercise for you fill the table. What is your e out you will need this. First term is cos pi v i t by v pi and this is the second term. So, if both v i and v q are 0, what is the amplitude? This is 0, this is 0. So, cos pi and this is j cos pi minus 1 and if you look at the uh, amplitude it is cos square, th this is the amplitude right. So, it will be square root of cos square pi v i by v pi plus cos square pi v q by v pi right. So, when both the voltages are 0 root 2 e in what about the phase pi by 4. Why pi by 4? Because this number is minus 1, sorry, this number is plus 1, this number is plus 1, so tan inverse 1, so pi by 4. Similarly, you can work out. And you will realize that if I look at the phase for each of these, this is all worked out, amplitude remains the same as root 2. But the phase changes as pi by 4, minus pi by 4, 3 pi by 4, 5 pi by 4. So, depending on what I am giving as a voltage at the input, I will now either have a pi by 4 or I will have a minus pi by 4, right, or I will have a 3 pi by 4, which is this, or a 5 pi by 4. So, this is how I achieve, I achieve QPSK modulation. One last thing is how do I now achieve 16 qam modulation? 
how do I now increase the amplitude levels? How do I achieve? So, this is two levels of uh, uh, four phase values you got, four PSK. How do I now get more phase values? Let us say I want to do eight PSK. I need to have more modulators and more phase shifters which are not at pi by 2, but at appropriate phase differences. So, I can keep extending that, but how do I now get multiple amplitude levels now? So, what I do is for generation of 16 quam, I generate 4 levels of uh, amplitude this way. So, let us say this is my uh, you know blue is my power and red is my field. This is my electrical 4 pam, 4 pam is 4 uh, levels of amplitude, pulse amplitude modulation with 4 levels. How do I generate 4 pam? I take 2 levels and I combine it with 2 levels which are. So, I will have one data stream which is this. I have another data stream which is this, but I attenuate it so that its height is reduced and then I can combine to get 4 levels of uh, amplitude. Okay. Now, that 4 level of amplitude, I feed it into the modulator. Again, biased at the null, uh, swing is uh, twice uh, v pi. So, corresponding, so these are 4, these are now my 4 independent levels of amplitude of my electrical input. Corresponding to this, I get this point, corresponding to this, I get this point, corresponding to this, I get this point, corresponding to this, I get this constellation point. So, I generate an electrical PAM, I feed it into my top modulator, I generate these 4 points. And the same thing I do for the bottom arm. So, I get 4 horizontal, 4 vertical. How did it become vertical? Because I did a pi by 2 phase shift. Now, all these 4 combinations, you could have multiple combinations of these. So, your constellation will be entirely filled. You will get 16 points. One thing you would have noticed here is these amplitude levels are unequal. Ideally, for a 4 PAM, the amplitude levels should be equal. Why did I make it unequal? If I just take a 4 PAM electrical 4 PAM, ideally the electrical 4 PAM should be first level, second level, third level, fourth level. This is my 4 PAM. Uh, but here, when I am giving it to the input of the modulator, I make sure that there is an alpha which is not really 50 percent of this. Why do I want to make it unequal? Yeah, you see this is going through a cos function, electric field is going through a cos pi v by uh, v pi or 2 v pi kind of function. Because it is a cos function, it is not a linear function, your output you want it to be equal. The separation between the different amplitude levels at the output you want it to be equal. So, you can back calculate what should be the separation between the le vo voltage levels of the input. So, that the output the, when it goes through a transfer function of cos, what is the output? So, this is how you generate uh, 16 qua. Now, the current standard for communication is 100 uh, gigabits per second. Today's state of the art standard, any new communication link you are laying, it is 100 gigabits per second. Now, this 100 gigabits per second is achieved this way. This is what how current systems, the current technology is. What you have is you have a data stream which is 25 gigabits per second. You have a second data stream which is 25 gigabits per second, third data stream and fourth data stream. The first two data streams will go into the first IQ modulator. What is an IQ modulator? Inside this you have two child modulators and one phase shifter. So, you will need two data streams, right? One, this is my I data and this is my Q data. And these are all the bias voltages. In the second IQ modulator, again, I will feed my I data and Q data. 
So, I generate uh, this is just 25 gigabits per second data stream. So, what is happening is you get QPSK, right? Here also you get QPSK. Then what you do is you use a polarization controller or a polarizer such that this is polarized along the x direction and this data stream is polarized along the y direction. And then you combine with a polarization beam combiner. So, the output will have in the x polarization you have QPSK at 25 giga baud because it is made with two 25 Gbps data streams. In the second polarization orthogonal polarization you again have 25 giga baud QPSK. Okay. So, this gives me 50 gigabits per second right because you are doing QPSK because you combine these two 25 gigabits per second as a 50 gigabits per second in QPSK and this is also going to give me 50 gigabits per second and the light the, the modulations are traveling in orthogonal polarizations in the fiber. So, you get a total of 100 gigabits per second. This is how the current state of the art fiber optic communication technology is transporting 100 gigabits per second. 25 gigabaud, 2 polarization, 2 bits per symbol because it is QPSK total 100 Gbps. People have also used 16 quam. So, instead of this 25 gigabits per second what you do is 25 gigabaud PAM you send in. So, that will be 50 Gbps, 50 Gbps, 250 here. So, that will give you 200 gigabits per second. So, some of the current installations the futuristic installations are doing uh, 200 gigabits per second with 16 quam instead of doing QPSK. Okay. So, we stop at this point and this is how a commercial transponder is looking like. Right? Today's commercial transponder looks like this it will have a laser, it will have two IQ modulators and it will have a polarization control and a polarization beam combiner. The beam combiner takes beam combiner will have two input arms and one output arm. It will take x and y and combine and give you x plus y at the output. Right? All are fiberized module and all gets packaged into a very small uh, form factor uh, pluggable modules kind of thing. Uh, the dimension is we can we can show you the pictures, but the dimensions are really small all that can be packaged into one unit. Okay? So, that completes our discussion on modulation.